On today's episode of Distilled Faith, what do we do when we want to pray, My will be done? In so many areas of our life, we're taught to be self-sufficient and independent. But what can be so helpful in other areas of our life can really be a professional hazard when it comes to our prayer life. Sometimes it can be really hard to let go and let God. So today we're going to talk about some ways we can keep control from taking control of our prayer life, as well as learn a prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola, a prayer of surrender. And on today's episode, I welcome Elsa to our show. Elsa, thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you today. Thank you. Nice to be here. And Elsa, tell me, you brought a little guest to uh, on the show today for us to enjoy. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I brought some rum uh, from Puerto Rico. Uh, I am from Puerto Rico. And the rum is Don Q. And I want to mix it with uh, Coca-Cola. So it is called a Cuba Libre drink. All right. And so we'll be tasting and I hope you enjoy it. Look forward to it. Let's get to it. So Elsa, you said that you are Puerto Rican by background. If I had never met a Puerto Rican before, what are they known for in their, their temperament, their personality type and such? We are happy people. We are kind of impatient and spontaneous. Mm -hmm. We uh, like to party. Mm -hmm. We are very intense with our feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use our hands a lot when we speak. Uh huh, as you so well demonstrate. Right. And uh, we, are, we are good friends and we love people. Yeah. And, and that's been my experience of, of walking with you and just um, how you approach life, living to the full and with tenacity. And um, I know a little bit about your story, but I'd like for you to share with our viewers today just a little about the story of kind of the journey that you've been on and how you've had to really step up to the plate in, in your life. I lost my husband several years ago. Um, <clears throat> My children, two of them were already on their own, and my youngest one was finishing his college, last year in college. So besides the pain and the hurt and the being, I found myself alone. Mm -hmm. um, I have been taken care of by my husband all the time. So I became very lonesome. I found myself having to take care of everything that I haven't done before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I, I was afraid, really. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get some help, professional help, because there were things like businesses that had to be taken care of. But my personal life, I had never been able to be on my own and take make decisions. So I had to do it. I felt that I have to take control of my life or else I will not survive. So yeah. I did. Yeah, and again, you've gone through some amazing challenges and have stepped up to the plate and I think it's made you the person that you, you are and, and how many things you have been able to take, to take care of. Um, but I know like when it comes to our prayer life, uh, what God tells us is God is our Father, God is the one who watches over us. God is the one who takes care of us. How have you experienced when we bring that kind of approach to life in general to, to take control? And how does that play out when you're now in dialogue with the Lord who has control of the whole, un whole universe? Now I'm more aware of it. Mm -hmm. When all this happened years ago, my mind was just on, you know, making decisions, solving my life, uh, being able to function. I know that I thought of God and I know that I prayed, but I did not ask him completely to take control. I felt that I had to do it. Uh, I felt like, uh, I felt that if I started praying and waiting, 
it would take me a while. So in my mind, I just had to take over, take challenge and do things. Now, as I look back, I have become more aware of it. I have been more in tune with God. Um, I have established a relationship with God that I did not have then. So now I find myself asking Him whenever I have to make a decision, even though I still do not give Him complete control. I had another setback when the hurricane came. I lost my house. And uh, this time I had help. My children helped me. I went to stay with my kids and uh, I was able to solve some problems with their help. But it, it was just starting all over again. Mm -hmm. But this time I felt that I had God with me. Uh, the friends that I have here that I had made helped me to. I have been very involved with my parish, my church, and those things have really given me a better friendship and a very connection with God. So my prayer life is better now than it was then. Yeah. Well, and again, I really appreciate you sharing your story because I think though not everyone has experienced um, the loss of a spouse, um, a, a major hurricane taking their mm -hmm. home. Um, people have experienced that, that challenge between mm -hmm. I want to believe that I'm in control of everything mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And yet, sometimes life throws more than I can, more than yeah. I think I can handle, more than I can handle alone, and I'm, I have to wrestle with the greater truth that ultimately I, I can't control everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's where God wants to meet us right in that moment, and so that we don't give in to fear, but with our faith we turn to the Lord and kind of renew our trust mm -hmm. that God is with us. God is bigger than the storms of life. Mm -hmm and God will help see us through it. And your presence with here today is a living testimony that God has gotten you through <laughs> those, yeah. those challenges and such. Um, but let me ask you, are there, are there any ways that when you are, again, you've mentioned fear, right? These are mm -hmm. so such universal, mm -hmm. universal experiences. Are there ways that you try to recenter yourself before God, like to renew your trust so that you are more disposed to give God the control in your in your prayer with Him? I did before. I just tried to dismiss the fear and just kind of charge ahead. I felt like I didn't have much time. It was a matter of, of time to me. Now I do. I, I feel that uh, He is really in control and that if I ask Him, if I am honest about it, He will he will come to me. And I'm also aware now that at that time that I was not asking him to have control of my life, he was doing it. I yeah. just was not aware of it. But now right. in retrospect, I think it was he who did it. I would not have been able to. So that helped me now to face things better. And uh, I still have the tendency that I guess we all have that when things go wrong or we have a storm, like recently on Sunday, remember the readings about the storm, when we get fear, we immediately call for God. Uh, we all do that and I still do it, but I try to calm myself and I try to, in many situations when I'm going to make a decision, I'll ask God, mm -hmm. but still, Still, I have that little control. Still, I ask <laughs> God in my terms. Right. I cannot completely surrender and say, here you are, you do it. I find myself saying, will you do this and that? Could you do this? You know, when right. I'm... Right. Well, know. that's how we started off the show. You know, when we want to pray, my will be done. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the way Jesus teaches us to pray. On my sort of. Right. Yeah. And Jesus teaches us to pray, yeah. thy, thy yeah. will be done. So, I, I have a question. And I think I can ask it in a way that we can answer sometimes with our head, uh, but then answer with the whole of our life. So what do you think the right answer is? Um, who is a better Lord of Elsa's life? Elsa or God? Definitely God. Right. But that's not how it feels all the time, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it's funny, as I was asking you, is there is there ways that you try to um, make sure that that normal desire desire to control doesn't take over um, so that we can pray thy will be done versus my will be done 
Uh, one way that I've tried to help people think about it is imagine that there was a job opening. And the job opening is Lord of, in this case, Elsa's life, right? So imagine that there's two applicants and one applicant is Elsa. And again, our viewers can insert their own name there. And we can look at the, 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 quality, the qualifications mm -hmm. of this applicant, okay? A finite person, only been on the planet a few decades, um, limited knowledge of the present and the past, no knowledge of the future, subject to mood swings and you know has to get so much sleep and you know all of those different things mm -hmm. we could say that are universal human limitations but then we look at what we know of Jesus um, that Jesus is um, God incarnate is free from sin is love itself lives all the virtues perfectly is not subject to uh, mood swings and anger you know sinful anger and all those other things and it's like huh if I took the names off of those two applications and just looked at their track record and their qualifications, it's like, which person would I pick as the person to be in control and make the decisions of my life? And it's kind of funny because taking it in the third person, like looking at it objectively from the outside, helps us to see, yeah, you know, I think it really is the best for the Lord to be in control of my life. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, and I still would pick Jesus, not by name, but just the qualifications, because I, I know for certain that he is the only one that can be the Lord of my life. He's the only one that can give me what I need. And again, he loves me so much because all that time that I've been asking, he was still there. So how will it be now if I ask him? He will probably give me even more. Yep. So, uh, definitely, that would be my answer. I would, you know, it would be Jesus, the, the Lord of my life. Well, and taking from Jesus' own words in the Gospels, um, in Luke chapter 12, we have two important reminders. Um, Jesus tells us, if even the smallest, smallest things in our life are beyond our control, why are we anxious about the rest? You know, and that's a great question to keep in mind, to remember that though we think we have control, of so much of our life, really so much is beyond our control and Jesus is calling us not to worry. But then like you said just now, that to, to trust that what I've, what what permission I've given him to be Lord mm -hmm. of my life, mm -hmm. he has given so much. Um, just a few verses later, Jesus says, do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. So it, again, that reminder that God yeah. wants to give. He's not wanting to hold back. Yeah. The only thing that I had found that st stands in the way, sort of, is the fact that I have been doing it for so long now that it has become like a bad habit that is hard to break. Mm -hmm. I tried to get away completely from it, you know, let go and let, let God, mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's mm -hmm. just like all those bad habits, smoking or something, that it's hard for you to break them Mm -hmm. and completely rely on God. I still, I try and I have hopes that eventually I will surrender completely, but I'm still working on it. I'm still struggling yeah. with it because something in me wants to take over after all those years. And also, as I said before, I'm impatient. <laughs> and I sometimes I feel like, well, if I pray, I gotta wait for the prayers to, you know, go through. If I get into it, right there, it's done. So that's that's my personality. That's the way I am, and and it it conflicts with the, the part of Jesus. You know, I just have to not have fear, not not be anxious, mm -hmm. and allow Him to take over. And it's not easy. Well, you're right, and I want to affirm, like, it is hard work. It's not like we, once we come to learn something, we always keep that right in our mind. You mm -hmm. know, our our memory can easily, you know, deceive us when we learn something, but that we forget, especially mm -hmm. when we have a difficult mm -hmm. moment. But just like we have bad habits that, that get stronger if we don't keep them in check, so too, if we practice good habits, then mm -hmm. they get easier over time. Right. And so even, like, beginning my prayer with, 
a quick review. Who's the better Lord of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, me or the Lord? And just going through that evidence, yeah. that little check can yeah. can help bring that awareness back to, to make sure that the habit of our prayer is in that posture mm -hmm. of, of trust. And yeah. I like the word you used a moment ago, surrender. In fact, I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of conclude our, our main portion of our discussion with a prayer that St. Ignatius of Loyola leaves us. And it really is, uh, I would say, the fruit of when we come to not seek to control, but to trust in God's control and providence of our life, then we can truly give everything over. And, mm -hmm. and this is the mm -hmm. prayer known as the Sushi Pei in Latin, but uh, this is the prayer he leaves us very short and sweet. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. Amen. Well, Elsa, thank you so much for, for being on our show today and for sharing your story and your mm -hmm. experience, which, again, I think so many of us can, can relate to. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as we are concluding, when it comes to the journey of life and faith and prayer and all the ups and downs, what's something that gives you hope going forward and continuing on this journey? I guess it is the fact, first of all, as I said before, that even though when I did not follow Jesus and ask for his control, he was with me, that he is still with me, that he loves me so much, that he will continue to be with me. He will not, you know, leave me. And that is, that's a good hope for me, that he knows that I'm struggling, so he understands it, and he will help me through it. So hopefully I will eventually let him control my life and surrender. Yeah, we're all works in progress, and it's important to remember past progress to give us hope for, for future progress. Amen. Amen. So, Elsa, do you have a favorite uh, saint or scripture or quote that, that you keep in your back pocket that inspires you? I love Santa Teresa of Avila. She was mm -hmm. Spanish, and uh, ever since I was younger, I, I knew a little bit about her. In fact, the church I married at was named after her, oh, nice. and uh, I went... Uh, to Avila with you in a pilgrimage. And I had a strange feeling when I went into the convent where he, she lived, and there were a lot of quotes of her all over the place and uh, kind of touched me. But there is a poem that she wrote. It, it's, uh, it's more like a little prayer, short mm -hmm. prayer. It's in Spanish. Uh, it's called Nada Te Turbe, let nothing disturb you. So I can, Translate in my head if you bear with me. Sure. Okay. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. Everything passes away. God never changes. Patience obtains everything. He who has God lacks nothing. Only God suffices. Huh. So that gives me a hope that as long as I have God, that's all we need. Yeah. We cannot do anything without Him. Amen. Yeah, and Amen. keeping our eyes fixed on, on God is to be the antidote, if you will, to our, to our fears, yes. small and great. Amen. Well, Elsa, thank you again for sharing your You're story and welcome. for being with us today. That's all for today's episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you to all of our supporters, and we invite you to please consider becoming a patron to support future episodes. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time on Distilled Faith.